All right, folks. So in this video, what we're going to do is compare a Mix 31 to a Mix 43 toroid. These are T240, which means they're 2.4 inches across in outer diameter. Now, these are ferrite core toroids, um, and they are used for chokes, choke balance, and uh, they are also used for impedance transformers or an on uh, You can wrap these in various configurations like a 9 to 1, 4 to 1, or 49 to 1 even. Um, in this video, we will wrap them like this. Now, I use RG58 coax. I use a three foot length. And uh, a lot of people have some opinions about RG58 coax, but it works really well for choke balance. Now, we use a choke balance like this. Uh, to suppress common mode current or electromagnetic interference along our transmission lines. I wanted to mention that I have one of these uh, mounted at my antenna feed point, and I also have one mounted where my feed line comes into the ham shack and goes into my antenna tuner. That way I have suppression on either end of my transmission line. Now I like to use these uh, PL259 SO239 um, pieces of coax because I can just plug them in and I don't need any barrel connectors. It makes it very easy to hook these up in a seamless way. Now in this video we are going to use a nano VNA to measure the impedance blocking capabilities of both of these cores and see which one is more appropriate to use as a choke ballon. So let's go ahead and get started. PCB Way is your one-stop shop for all your PCB project needs. Regardless of your requirements, PCB Way makes it easy to get a quote and get you prototyping and working on your project as fast as possible. PCBWay.com has a wizard that allows you to input your project parameters and then get a quote generated so you know exactly what your costs are going to be. At any time, if you need help, PCB Way's friendly support staff is only a chat away. Okay, here is a website that will be linked below from Palomar Engineers. These folks provide a lot of solutions for RFI and ham radio in general. Uh, this article is about ferrite mix selection guidelines, and it talks about different material types. It talks about the difference between mixes, and then this table is what we're interested in. It talks about different mixes and what they're used for and what parts of bandwidth that they can handle. So uh, for this video, we're concerned about mix 31 and mix 43, two of the more common mixes that uh, you see in amateur radio. Mix 31, it says here uh, for a wideband transformer one-to-one, -one, which would be a balance. And um, it works for RFI and EMI common mode suppression. The range is one through 300 megahertz. And that is why we typically see these used for choke balance or for RFI suppression. And then uh, sometimes you'll see mix 43, which is the second row here, um, used. And here it says for RFI common mode suppression, 25 megahertz to 300 megahertz. So this is not going to get uh, lower HF. It's not going to work as well there. Um, but here you can see it is used for wideband transformers uh, from 3 to 60 megahertz. Now, for me and a lot of hams, uh, we operate around 40 meter band and up through 60 on HF radios. I know there's folks who do 60, um, 60 meters, 80 meters, 100 and 60 meters. You would have to look for other mixes, 52 or 61, for example. But uh, I choose to mostly use mix 43 for any ununs or for um, um, multi-ratio uh uh, impedance transformers. So you'll see down here, uh, it says mix 43 is excellent for common mode chokes from 25 to uh, 300 megahertz. Use mix below 31 below uh, 10 megahertz for higher choking impedance. Um, mix 43 is available in toroids and slip on beads. So that is uh, just some information that you can get from this site. I will link it below, but I didn't want to spend too much time here. So I have my Nano VNA and I calibrated it using Nano VNA Saver. 
I will have a link to a video playlist below that talks all about nano VNAs and how to use them and how to calibrate them. For this calibration, we calibrated from 6.5 megahertz to 30 megahertz, and that covers us from our 40 meter to 10 meter bands. I've done a through calibration that includes these BNC cables to alligator clips, and we're going to use these with this ballon to test the insertion loss or impedance. And what I've done is by including these, I have uh, considered any kind of impact or interference that these cables will have. It's a process called normalization. So we should be okay. Let's go over now to Nano VNA Saver. So here you can see Nano VNA Saver and we are doing up here you can see an S21 plot or a gain plot. Now S21 means that our output port from our test device, the Ballon, is port two. Our input or the signal is coming from port one of our nano VNA. And you can see with normalization, we have zero dB loss all the way across. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert the Ballon into the configuration and I'll show you what that looks like. So what we've done is we've left the shield connector connected here with these alligator clips. And then we've taken our pin or our center conductor and we've connected it to the shield of the coax running through our ballon. This is a mix 31 ballon. We will wrap a mix 43 for comparison purposes. So I've just connected it to the shield here and I've connected it to the shield here. And you can see that. Let's go back to Nano VNA Saver and you'll be able to see what the impedance was. So here you can see the various readings that we get when we perform the sweep with the Nano VNA. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set these markers so that way we can get a reading as to what the actual decibel loss was. Okay, here you can see our marker data. And what I've done is I've set markers for 40, 30, 20, 15, and 10 megahertz. Now, typically we would like to see somewhere around 30 dB of attenuation. Um, that would be what I would consider significant. Um, once you get around 25, you're generally okay, but you really want that number to be a little bit higher. Now, some people will debate this uh, to the ends of the earth. So we take a look at this at 40 meters, we are, our S21 gain is negative 25, which is reasonable. Uh, for marker two, our 30 meter band, our S21 gain is negative 19 dB. And uh, that is probably not going to do, uh, is going to be good enough for us. Uh, for the 20 meter uh, band, we are negative 2 uh, 1.311, so negative 21.3. Um, that's probably okay, but not ideal. Uh, for the 15 meter band, we are negative 22.9, which is a little bit better, but still not where we want to be. And then when we take a look at uh, marker 5 in the 10 meter band, we are at negative 19.7. Again, that uh, is not where we want to be. So let's go ahead and wind a toroid using the mix 43, and then we will see where we are. We're also going to set this trace as our reference so we can compare the two. So here's the coaxial cable that we are going to use, exactly the same as this one. Here's our Mix 43 toroid, and then our two zip ties that we use to complete this project. Uh, we do 11 turns here. So every time your coax passes through the center of the toroid, you count that as a turn. So we have one, two, three, four, five, number six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven turns. So let's go ahead and make this one.
There you go. You can see that this is not the most difficult of processes. Making these chokes is pretty easy. So let's go ahead and insert this one on our Nano VNA, and then we will take a reading. Okay, and here are our sweep results comparing the Mix 43 in blue to the first sweep, which was the Mix 40, 31. Get myself confused here a little bit. So when we take a look at this, um, marker 1, which is in the 40 meter band, is now at negative 28.3. And that's pretty good, but uh, I did mention that ideally you would be down closer to 30, but uh, I think we can live with that. When I take a look at the 30 meter band, we are at negative 27 dB. Um, again, that's better. That's significantly better than where we were before, but uh, we, we still want to do better. And one of the things that you can do is you can add extra turns of your coaxial cable that uh, can increase your impedance. But at some point in time, you start to get less and less benefit with each turn. They call that the law of diminishing returns. Taking a look at marker three negative 21.6 uh, better than before but uh, that one is not ideal taking a look at marker number four we are negative 25 db and then marker number five in the 10 meter band we are at negative 37 which is fantastic so let's take a few moments to talk about what we observed and what we learned now against what we read in the palomar uh, website on that article, our 43 mix toroid performed better than our 31. That also goes counter to some of my past experiences building and testing similar balance chokes in the past. A couple of things could have happened. Perhaps the clerk who shipped these to me took them off of the wrong shelf. That's a possibility. Perhaps I labeled them incorrectly when I got them. I doubt that. Um, perhaps there is something going on with the coaxial cable. Maybe it's not uh, RG58 or maybe the cable is uh, mislabeled. Who knows? Perhaps the Nano VNA wasn't calibrated correctly. I doubt that. And the other one is, is that perhaps the coaxial connectors with the alligator clips that we used were janky. In any event, what's important when you homebrew something like this or even if you buy a balance choke, you have the ability uh, and you have the equipment to test these to know what to expect when you add them into your antenna system or into your ham shack. Anyhow, that's going to wrap this video up. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. I do appreciate it. Please post any suggestions, comments, recommendations uh, below, and I will do my best to respond. Thanks again, everyone.